Um, there are two plugins that we will be uh, demonstrating in the workshop. So the first one is GitHub Copilot, and the second one is GitHub Copilot Chat. So we might need to install both of these uh, plugins. Both of them are offered by uh, GitHub. Right. Um, so okay. Uh, right. So um, for the first part of the session, what we are going to do is we are going to um, build a Spring Boot application, which has, uh, which has support for REST API. So I'm going to share the link to the repository. Um, I'll add this in the Zoom chat. So please go ahead and clone the repository uh, if you have it. Uh, if you're joining those who are in the lab, you might have to search for this uh, employee manager Spring Boot tap on GitHub. My ID is Chamath NS. So might need to search for it. I don't have any other way to share it with you guys. Sorry. Um, just uh, clone the repo. I already have it here, I think. Right, um, right. Okay, so for those who are in joining, joining from the Zoom chat, uh, can you guys hear me? Sorry about the echo if there was any. Right, thanks. Um, yeah, so we are going to <coughs> clone the, we clone the uh, Spring Boot tab and we're going to open it uh, with the uh, idea. Here, yeah, first I'll uh, give you guys a bit of a context on the application. So this would be an employee management application. Uh, what we're trying to do is perform basic CRUD operations. So we have a uh, very simple POJO where we have some attributes for the employee, name, email, phone, address, um, and there's a constructor and getters and setters. And when, then we have the employee controller. So right now, I only have the API employees path added as the request mapping. And I only have the create post mapping added. So a user would have to send a post request to the create endpoint to create an, create an employee. So now this is using uh, uh, the employee, reposit uh, 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 employee repository interface, which has been extended by a JPA repository, so everything would be in memory. So we, when we are creating a user, it would be automatically saved uh, through the in-memory database. Right, um, and then uh, there's the actual Spring Boot application, which we only have like string string application dot run, and I have a a load database class where we are, I'm just populating the database with some uh, blank users, some example users. Right. So first off, I'll start with the employee controller class. So right now, we have the create post mapping added. So next, I will uh, try to um, create, uh, uh, like get get all employees method for fetching all the employees that are in the database. So I can just uh, type uh, a comment here, get all employees um, and return 
201 and we can just so before i go further we can just uh, go through the shortcut so tab would be to accept any of the uh, suggestions that we have in the that the copilot suggests and we can so as you can see i'm not typing so this is a suggestion that we that's been uh, popped by github copilot so i can just press tab and accept the suggestion or else I can press Alt and uh, square brackets and cycle through if there are any other suggestions. So it says no more copilot suggestions available. So that's the only suggestion I think we have here. So this is actually right. So I need a get mapping to the all endpoint. And if I just press Enter, it will uh, give me a sort of a code. And it actually uh, looks OK. So it will return a response entity with the HTTP status created. And in the body, it will call this employee repository dot find all method, which would fetch all the employees in the database. This actually looks good. So I'm going to go. And then now it automatically like takes in the context of the class and automatically suggests what I would do next. Like these are basic uh, CRUD operations in any uh, Controller class, right? So this next one is get employee by ID and return a status code. If I press tab, it will uh, uh, put in the code. But uh, for this one, I'll try to get employee by name. Change it up, and so it will uh, give me a get mapping. Um, I rather prefer to have the name in the request body instead of a path param. So I'll uh, edit it like this. And uh, then I'll type in public. Um, should uh, right. so it will adjust to what I have typed in in the previous line, and suggest me this code block where the method would uh, pass in a request param, like name, and it will in the return it will call the employee repository find by name with the request param that was added. So it all works out. So I'll continue to create the update. Um, yeah, so this one is, let's say, delete employee by ID and return a no content status code. So let's see if I can cycle through and find it, if, if, if it suggests anything. Also, you can just cycle through the shortcut. So in the sidebar, there would be this GitHub Copilot pane added. So if I refresh it, uh, it should pop up with some suggestions so it has some few it have few suggestions so either we can accept one of these or we can type in our own thing and let it suggest yeah, itself so i'll uh, say delete the employee by name and return uh, no content no content status code so it will add a delete mapping, but uh, usually what we use is uh, post mappings for deletes also. We can use uh, delete mappings too, but I'll, I'll prefer post mappings here. And it has uh, suggested the code with the request param name. And it'll try, it's trying to delete by name. So first, what we should do is see if the employee exists, right? So I will uh, type in a c uh, comment saying, check if employee exists. So it automatically suggests I will press tab. Right. So first what it does is so I will accept the suggestion and then I will try to explain. So it will first try to find the employee by name and if it's not null it will call on delete method and delete the employee by name and uh, it, lo it also adds the response message as well automatically suggests the response message if if the employee does not exist it will return a no uh, 404 so uh, this looks pretty good i'll add one for <laughs> update uh, as well so it automatically suggests the code yeah, I'll say post mapping is good. Yeah, 
So it uh, looked at the previous example I did. So it, here also it first tries to check if the employee exists, and then only it's going to um, it's going to delete the existing one and save a new, new employee that will be passed in the request body. So this all looks good. And next, I'm going to show you how you can improve an existing code block with the with GitHub Copilot. So in the create, we have this save uh, employee uh, method. So let's add some validation to the uh, before we actually save the employee in the database. So let's say uh, check if there is an uh, there is already an employee with the same name. So it automatically suggests, and I'll accept. The first suggestion looks good. Right, so it will uh, return a HTTP conflict status and say an employee already exists. So that is a uh, good validation for as a first step. Um, next, as I mentioned in the overview, the employee has few different attributes. Name, email, phone, address, right? So I can uh, add some validation to check if the phone number is actually a number. Um, phone number is valid. It, uh, so in the first suggestion, it only checks for the length, which is 10 is uh, a good uh, start. Let's see if, he ha if it has any other suggestions. I will try to cycle through. Uh, yeah, it will ch only change the uh, body of the response. So, okay, let's try to improve it by adding, uh, improving the comment that we add. Check if the phone number is valid using a regex. Right, so let's see what it does. It only matches for 10 digits. Uh, regex pattern uh, for only numbers. And uh, digits, let's say digits, 10 digits. Right, it uh, like improves upon the previous suggestions and adds another validation, right? I'll accept it. Uh, now this looks good. Um, so we have all the endpoints. We have the create and get all, get an employee by name, delete an employee by name, and update employee by name methods added. So I will try to fire up the um, Spring Boot application. Right, looks good. So I will. I already have the endpoints added in a Postman collection. You also can try this. Um, just need to. Um, I'm not sure that I can zoom in more. So this should be the endpoint. Uh, see in the request mapping, we had was API employees. To, so to get all employees. What we had was added was the all get mapping. So I'm going to call call the all endpoint uh, with the get with the get method and see if we have anything. So we already have the preloaded data. So as I mentioned in the load database one, we are adding two new users. So those users are available now. I'll try to create an employee. So to create an employee, what we need to do is call the create endpoint. It should be a post mapping. And in the request body, we should have an employee object. So what are the parameters? Name, email, phone, and address. So I have added uh, a sample here. So I'm going to execute. And yeah, in the response, it shows the new uh, employee I added. I can get all employees and see if the newly added employees there. It's there. 
Next, we can also check for our validations that we did. So uh, the validation in the validations, first we try to add the uh, add a validation to check if the user already exists. So if I try to create a user called Alex again, so what it should it should uh, give me a conflict status code. It uh, throws the message employee already exists for nine conflict. So this looks good. We can also check for the uh, phone number validation. We can uh, add a character and send. It will say invalid phone number. Right, so all the validations are going on uh, properly. So next, I'll try to call the get endpoint and demonstrate that it's also working. So in the name, uh, we added as a uh, query param, right? So uh, it will return the user if we try to call the user by name, fetch the user by name. We'll also delete the user and just check all the endpoints. Right. Um, yeah, the user is gone. So this would be sort of, uh, so now we have the Spring Boot application with the REST APIs running. Another uh, thing that we can use Copilot is to uh, write our tests. So in this uh, repo, I have a test class called Control Integration Test. So I have added one test to test the employee creation. So I have added some comments. We need to test, uh, we need a test case to forget employee by name. So let's try to write that. So Copilot suggests to start with test annotation. And here it only has uh, suggested a partial code. So this can also happen some time to time. So once you get past that hurdle, it will uh, try to, uh, so this method also would uh, be not correct. What we would need is to first save the employee, right? So I'll call the employee repository and just uh, save employee. And I'll call this one employee, uh, save the employee. Right. And then um, next, I'll try to find the existing employee if it's the our test method is get employee by name, right? So I will. Uh, so this suggestion is also somewhat incorrect. What we need is uh, employee repository find by name. So it will uh, once we correct it, it will suggest the rest of it. So that is how it is sometimes. Next, we'll need to assert if, so that part, it automatically suggests assert exit employee get name is equal to, uh, yeah, employee get name is also fine. Right. So likewise, you can add test cases. I'm not going to demonstrate uh, the other two test cases. So when you're uh, doing some, uh, like, projects or whatever, when you need test cases, this Copilot tool can really uh, speed up the processes uh, with automatic generation and stuff. Another thing that in the that we use Copilot for most is for documentation. So when you take a class, you need some documentation, right? So in Java, we have the Java doc documentation. So I will uh, start with the initial Java doc uh, starter. So it automatically suggests the class uh, comment. This is a controller for the employee API. And we can enter, and it will keep on suggesting documentation. The in con con it contains endpoints for creating, reading, updating, and deleting employees. So likewise, you can add documentation for the post endpoints as well. See this uh, already suggests. So I, I can try to include request body 
yeah SL the employee to be created likewise so you can add documentation to all your code with using the copilot suggestions right so now I think we are in a good position to move on to the VS code extension so the next half of the um, workshop is going to be we are going to uh, build a UI to use to make use of these endpoints that we just build these five endpoints that we just built so for that one I have a repository uh, uh, with a boilerplate code added um, employee manager react app <coughs> I will add this one also in the zoom chat please clone the repository if you want to join I mean the hands-on session continue the hands-on session so I added it in the zoom chat and we can just uh, uh, I have it cloned I try to clone it with you guys so you also have the time um, right um, I will open up VS code from within this directory um, hope this is visible um, right so this would be the basic hierarchy so we have app chase uh, list users and a create users file that I have added just to show you guys uh, what this looks like as of now it's very simple uh, boilerplate code I actually did with the help of copilot chat um, so I'm going to first npm install and then it will create all the node modules and once npm install is run we can start with npm start right looks like we have another app running sorry about that um, right. it's still compiling and so yeah this is the basic uh, react app what we are going to mm, that we are going to modify so we have a create user page which uh, we can Im input data for the API to consume right now it does nothing so for uh, in the list users I have actually configured the configured it to fetch the call the list uh, get all endpoint and uh, populate all the users so now there are some buttons here also which doesn't work uh, so I'm going to open it with uh, VS code and if you have installed the github copilot chat extension you would see uh, this in the sidebar this chat uh, option so this is really neat what we can do is we can always ask for general questions so if you have anything that you want to ask copilot you can do here like for an example let's uh, outline the solid uh, principles so it will just output uh, the basic OOP uh, principles that if you want to help uh, won't help with any of the assignments also you can <laughs> just ask copilot it's actually uh, pretty efficient and it takes in the context of the code so uh, unlike ChatGPT or other uh, the tools uh, this is a built-in tool for the code base that you're working with so 
if if I want to ask some question about the code base, like uh, for an example, let's say you first take a look at this code and you don't understand anything, you can just select the part that you want it to explain, and in the copilot chat, there are few certain commands that you that it supported. So it has help, test, simplify, fix, explain, and some other ones that I haven't even uh, worked with. So this explain tab, it will explain how the selected code would work. So I have selected the function app code block. If I ask it to explain, it will go on about the app component and how it has a uh, router component inside. Right. Is this better? Yeah. Thanks. Right. Um, hope uh, those who are in the Zoom chat can still hear me. I'm going to continue. So, in the explain com with the explain command, you can select a code block that is there in your uh, workspace and ask it to explain what it's doing. Right. So it will go on about how uh, routes would work. And this would say, for an example, when the user navigates to the create path, create user component will be rendered. So in the code, I have the create user component added here. So I can ask then, what does this react user component do? So I can just select the entire code. And there are a few shortcuts as well. You can press Control uh, i to initiate the code a uh, copilot uh, pop-up uh, pane and ask it to explain or fix any of the code. So it will uh, explain about the create to the React component that I have added. So it would call the... So right now, it will just log uh, the new user that we have added. So for this, I want to call our get tape, uh, our create API that we created and post the user to our Spring Boot application. So I will copy the endpoint. So this is the create endpoint. And in the copilot uh, chat, I will ask, I want to call the uh, create endpoint and pass the user data in a post. So if I type in what I need to do, uh, it will uh, say I need to update the handle submit function to make the API call. Right, so I'll copy the handle submit function and in the code, uh, I have a handle submit function. Right now, what it does is it just logs the uh, new user that we're adding. So I'll paste this block here. And as you can see, it uses the fetch API in JavaScript and calls the endpoint that I added. The content type, it automatically takes an application JSON and method also, since I said it's a post, it will uh, set the method to post. And yeah, so it will do all the validation, validation in the sense, the basic stuff we, we, when we are working with the fetch API. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go over to my create user page. I'm going to uh, list users first. And then I'm going to create a new user. Um, Sample address. Right, so let's open up the console in the browser tab and then try to create the user. Right, it uh, said it said there's an. Uh, right, so the create request, it has returned a 201. In the response, yeah, in the response, it has uh, uh, added, back, I mean, provided the user just, we just added. So 
if you go to the list users endpoint, it should actually show the new user that we added. So right now, uh, this edit and delete buttons doesn't work. So these are in list users page. I'm going to go back to uh, VS Code and go to the list users page and say that I want to add uh, delete function for the delete button when we click on the delete button. I will uh, open up Copilot chat and I'll uh, add the delete endpoint as well like this would be the delete by name endpoint. So I will say when I click on the delete button I want to post to It will then suggest me block of code. So we have this handle, del handle delete click uh, constant, the function. So it asks me to replace the function with the block suggested here. So there's another neat trick that we can use. So if you have sel this selected in the copilot chat pane, there are a few certain shortcuts where we can copy or insert at cursor. I'm going to use insert at cursor. So it will just replace the uh, existing one with the uh, newly suggested code. Right, this looks okay. So I'm going to save it and then go back to the application. If I try to delete it now and then list users. So it didn't work for some reason. Let's see why it didn't work. Um, it says 404, but uh, the list one would not render. Right, it has been deleted, but the list page is not updated. So that also we can fix. Right now, I'm just going to uh, keep it that way and next we'll try to add some UI improvements for this page. So I am predominantly, I work with backend stuff so I'm actually very uh, new to UI development so I will let Copilot uh, help me on this and create a better looking UI for this, uh, at least for the, for this bit. So it's in the app.js file where we have the where we have all the routes so I will select everything and ask um, render every render each uh, route in a hamburger style menu so it will suggest a block of code Right, so it actually uh, gave me the whole page that I want to add. So in here we can insert it to a new file or just copy and replace it however that we want. I mean, it'll, uh, we can use it however the, which way we want. So I'm just going to replace everything and save. So as you can see, it has added this hamburger style menu from the left hand pane. We are when we click on each page, it will go back, it will go, I mean, navigate us to the pages. So let's say if we want, if I want to like style it more, if uh, I wanted to color the hamburger menu in a different color, like a gradient, make at some pop. So I can just say, um, so it's in the, it's, it's a drawer, drawer component. So I can just select this. And I can ask Copilot, I can ask it in line also, I'll uh, demonstrate that feature. So I can ask, uh, add a red pastel gradient. So it will try to fetch the response. 
so in line it will suggest some of the uh, changes so we can either accept or discard or just copy it discard to clipboard discard to new file so i'm just going to accept i'm going to trust copilot on this one and save and see so it actually added the gradient for the uh, whole pl whole page i think which is not what we wanted um, so i'm just going to revert that change i want to add it to the sidebar right so I'll ask it again, add a red pastel gradient to the sidebar, side now bar. Let's see if it is able to give us a proper suggestion. So this is some me acting as someone who doesn't know anything about front-end development, which is true to some degree. So just going to accept the suggestion that is given by Copilot. Um, I think it's also added. Uh, right. So it only added the linear gradient for this bit. So I'm going to um, I'm going to set the uh, height param I think to be uh, 100 bh I think it should be it should work right let's see yeah uh, so the entire pane is the gradient is applied to the entire pane so now everything works uh, okay next up uh, I'll try to update the list users page so now the delete option would also work i'll try to delete but it won't update the uh, list page right i'll have to we'll have to call the list page again to see the changes so let's fix that part so i'm going to go to list users and i'm going to select uh, the handle delete click function and i'm going to ask it to uh, Ask a ask the inline chat uh, copilot chat to fix this, uh, 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 like call the list and all and get all endpoint again and uh, render the updated users. Right. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, it's just going to remove the deleted user from state, which is not what I want. But it also works. So this is instead of calling the REST API again and just call, just going to remove the user from the state. We'll accept it for the time being. We're going to create a new user. I'm going to create Alex again. Going to create a user. Going to list users. So Alex is there. If I click on delete, um, still the page is not updated. Okay, so that's a bummer. We'll have to click on. Uh, so it's still not working. So I'll ask uh, again to fix update the page after the user is deleted right I'll accept the suggestion I'll try to delete the user still doesn't work some reason we'll have to just fire up the Spring Boot 
microservice again so we can have the users added back again the sample users right um yeah that's a that's a bit of a hiccup which i'm not going to go into uh, further so in the home page we can also customize the home page i'm going to just do that part go to home page um so it to be the app js right and i'm going to uh, ask it to style it uh, add some uh, empty typography just going to ask copilot chat to do that uh, empty typography and fill the page okay it's asking me to update the function right typography is not defined so we get an error so i am just going to ask copilot when when we are faced with error we can just ask it what we should do typography is not defined we just going to paste the thing it's asking me to import typography from material ui co i already have the material ui co in the list so i'm going to add typography here right so this is the updated um, home page so we can do further customizations which i think you got the gist of it right so you can play around with it and create your own applications so i'm just going to demo uh, something i created with using copilot so it's uh, i'm going to just git stash and check out to demo final branch and i'm going to demo in, i'm in the demo final one and i'm going to just show the output that what you similar to what you can get using the using github copilot chat so let's see um we can press npm start so this is a sample application i just finished just uh, some a website home page and it has the similar sort of hamburger menu um can go to use list users and can create users and it will navigate you back to the list page and we can delete the user so you can i'm i'm actually not someone who has dabbled with react a lot or at all so i could mm, manage to like speed up the process and learn from copilot chat and build the application like within a few hours actually so if it's a really neat tool to have in your arsenal when you are working if you are not familiar with the language or if you are not familiar with some of the concepts it actually can help you learn a new language new language i have used that to learn r some of the things i did like for pet projects i had no idea going in i asked i just uh, started up a boilerplate code and put github copilot chat and asked of about the functions and how it works it will give me a detailed breakdown of how the language works so that's actually something that you can't get from a even a code i mean a, even a course that you do online it would be a like a curated course for the material that they provide so you can just pick up whatever the boilerplate code or whatever the codes that you find in the internet a project that you find on the internet and just ask copilot chat how this works so it will explain it very neatly so you can learn new languages you can learn like about the about the concepts of the languages uh, very easily and you can keep on asking questions like follow up questions on it and it will answer based on the context of the code base which is something that you can't do with uh, chat gpt yet so that's one of the advantages we have with copilot and 
I think you guys all can get the Copilot uh, plugin, right? With the student subscription. So get uh, make use of it and try to you know improve your workflows. So it's not something that's as uh, Udesa mentioned, it's not something that's going to replace. I don't think uh, yet. So <laughs> but it's something that you can use to uh, far I mean expedite your workflows. Like can really uh, push out code very fast with with some plugin with, with, with this plugin you can generate code automatically generate test cases generate documentation like it's something that i hate doing adding documentation to the code i write like it's you should do it uh, but it's very mundane task right so you can use copilot and it will just write beautiful documentation for you like in the if you for an example if i take this and there's another function called doc. It says a documentation comment for this symbol. So it will suggest and see, I just have to accept and it has the documentation added. I just realized this is not really visible, no? I should have, um, no, it's like almost done, but <laughs> maybe uh, I can switch off the theme. Yeah, color theme. Something more contrasty. Very lighter themes, <laughs> right? Uh, this is help. We'll just use this one. Maybe, yeah. So likewise, you can add comments to your code and really fasten your workflows using Copilot. And for the last bit of the session, I actually have another tool I wanted. I want to demonstrate. So this is called GitHub Copilot CLI. If you go to this site, um, I'll add it in the Zoom chat. This is actually currently in uh, it's actually usable prototype stage, so it's not a public release yet. But you can get early access by signing up for the waitlist. If you go to the GitHub Next, that actually has all the stuff GitHub is planning to do, like it's their bleeding edge projects. Um, let's wait until it loads up. Right. Uh, if you scroll down on the page, you can see some of the projects that uh, GitHub is working on right now. So all of these are, this is completed, so this one is in wait list. Copilot for pull request that's in wait list. This is a uh, this is one I was going to demonstrate. So these ones are for the organizations. So if you work in, uh, in the industry, you'll see we can make use of these uh, tools to create docs for our reports and uh, create pull request in GitHub. If you work with GitHub, you'll um, realize like something that we'll be using for the majority of your uh, career. <laughs> So there are a whole lot of other projects as well that are going on. So this is a uh, one that we just <laughs> looked at. So it's in a product stage. So I'm going to go to this Copilot for CLI. So this is a uh, this is pretty much GitHub Copilot integrated to your command line, your terminal. So I already have this installed. Maybe you guys want. If you already have it, uh, you can also I mean. Just check it out. Uh, the internet is somewhat slow, you know. Yeah, so I I will just share my terminal and give you guys an example. Um, this is fine, right? So in GitHub Copilot CLI, we have three uh, basic 
starters. So we can press a double question mark and just type in something that you want to know. So let's, this is something that I just typed out, this is auto suggestions. So let's go to a directory and first then, then see. So I'll go to my, go to a repository. Uh, I'll go to product is, which is a, which is the product that I work on in WSO2. So this is a public repository. So I'm going to ask GitHub Copilot CLI, what's the size of this directory? And it will uh, generate this and generate the command, and then it will explain what the command is doing. So du is used to compute the disk usage and all the other flags, minus h, s, total disk usage of the folder, or to be human readable, right? And the dot specifies the current uh, folder. So sometimes there are instances that you want to run command line, like CLI commands, and you simply are not able to remember. You just have to go and search on the internet and see what's going, like what's the command for it, and sometimes it might not be even correct. So one of the things I wanted to show was the uh, what's the what are the processes running on a certain port? Let's say a port like port three thousand. I think lsop or something, right? The command lsof lsof minus i three thousand. So this is the command. Uh, it we can automatically execute the shell. It asks us whether we want to execute. So these are the uh, processes that have been running on port 3000. There are three node, just one node process. So get the idea. So you can pretty much ask anything on the Linux, on the Unix systems. This is both for Linux, Unix. Even for Windows, I think they have this, the CLI integration. Next up, uh, there's a, I, sh I showed you the general command. So there's another one called the git starter. When you ask git question mark, uh, we can ask uh, some of the git related, git specific questions that you want. It's enhanced for git. So something that I want to, so this actually we don't need, right? We create a new repository. I'll just uh, demo that because that sounds fun. <laughs> I'll create a new directory called demo app demo project and I'll navigate to it and this is not a git project yet so I'll ask copilot CLI uh, create a new repository from the current directory cont contents we don't have anything yet you know what we'll just add a readme so we can ask copilot the general command add a readme dot md to this directory So this is the command. Uh, we don't have any content to be added. So okay, I'll revise the query. There's this other option to revise the query. So I'll say um, type a sample text in the readme. Right. So it'll echo hello world into the readme file. So this I can execute. And I can show you guys what this looks like. So it just says hello world. Right now, next I will uh, demonstrate how you can create a git repository using the git command. So this is a command, create a new repository from the current directory contents. So if I just execute it, it will give me a uh, few, like a string of commands. So first we need to add git in it might be familiar with it and git add dot means add everything in the current directory and it's adding a git commit minus m initial commit it already has the commit also added so if you want to change something in the commit name commit message or anything we can just revise the query and send i'll just run this command and uh, execute right now we have the demo project added next uh, the third the third and the final uh, uh, starter that we have with Copilot CLI is a GH 
plus option. So gh gh question mark. So gh means GitHub GitHub CLI. So in GitHub they offer GitHub CLI tool. So what you can do is it's more integrated towards GitHub. So the git command was for git, anything related to git. This is for GitHub. So we can just push this repository that we created to GitHub from the CLI itself. So push the current, no, let's say create a repo on GitHub with the current directory. So this is a command for it. <coughs> so I'll just execute. I'll say push an existing local repository to GitHub and path to local repository will be the current one. Demo project is fine. I'll add a description, sample description. Uh, visibility, I'll add it as private. So you don't need this later. So I'll just add a remote everything and just go through the default ones. And it will just create the repo on GitHub for, my, for us with the readme, hello world. So it's pretty neat, if you ask me. So there are a few other commands that uh, you can play it. Like I actually use this for some of the data preprocessing that you might, you guys might need to do. So if you want, if say for an example, let's go for a repository and do it just to demonstrate. So this directory is. Uh, so what I try to use this is our documentation repository. We want to filter out only the content. So this. The size of this is, uh, we can ask, what's the size? It's around, uh, I think, 800 or something megabytes. Um, so uh, it's actually one gigabyte. So we, this is because it has all the images and everything that we want to render a doc page. So I just want to uh, have the content of the documents instead of the images, only the like text. So if I want to do that, I can uh, include, ask it to uh, keep everything else except for .md files. Like keep, uh, no, sorry, uh, keep only the md files and remove everything. Keep only the .md files in the directory. So, and remove uh, the rest. Right, so it will actually uh, generate a somewhat complex uh, command. So it also explains what the command does. That displays that we only want to list files, not folders. Want to exclude files ending in MD, delete. We want to delete the files. Now this won't delete it recursively. So I will go to revise query and I would say uh, re delete uh, recursively. Search and delete recursively. Right, I'll execute this. Uh, I don't think it uh, made any difference. Let's see. Let's uh, look at the size. Now it's only 6.3 megabytes. So that's only the size of the text content that we have in the docs repository. So if you are want, if you want to do any data preprocessing from some of the sites that you want, you can. You only need to extract out the test. You can download the site. Like you have the data crawlers, right? You have. You can download everything and just filter out to the file type that you want to include. So yeah, that's um, pretty much all I wanted to share in this session. Um, I will take any questions if you guys have anything. I'll be happy to answer. Those who are in the Zoom chat also can add. Uh, any questions that you have? Right, thank you. So, any questions? I hope you guys got something out of this. Like, uh, the aim was to, you know, get get you started with the Copilot plugin because this is something that we heavily use. Actually, we do because uh, some of the things that I do day to day. It's like much more improved with the use of the plugin. Like as I mentioned, documentation, test creation, 
even the validation of some of the codes. When we are doing code reviews, what we can do is just ask, if you are not sure about the logic, we can just ask it to explain the code. Expl we can just select and ask it to explain. And it will actually give you some of the pointers, like if there are any security uh, concerns with the fix that they have added, they will, it will actually suggest the fix. So you don't have to go through the context, like read through the context and figure out what's wrong. You can just ask Copilot and it'll, when you have a huge workload, it actually helps really a lot. So just try to install the plugin and try to make use of it. That's the that's idea. Hope you guys got something out of this and thanks for joining. Yeah. Right, any questions in the Zoom chat? Um, yeah, if you, if it's updated to the, yeah, yeah, um, it will, if it's updated, as I mentioned, you can actually learn new languages even. It's updated to some of the libraries, of course, like React is the library uh, that we use here, so uh, you can have Copilot chat and ask for itself, like, whether we have the framework. Like, if you want to say bootstrap, like, we can demonstrate it real quick. Uh, use React Bootstrap. You can just ask to improve this with using React Bootstrap, right? Uh, I think uh, my project, I re-rendered re it, and now the file is not there. Let's see. Uh, OK. Uh, actually, CSS bootstrap, right? CSS. Improve. I made a typo. So it will uh, say what we need to do. So we need to add the bootstrap main CSS at the import here. And it will actually say what we need to do. We can npm install bootstrap or yarn add bootstrap. Um, this is the improved code with the given library. Hope that uh, was cleared out. Yeah, I think uh, we can wind up. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out. You can ask me or just post them under the post. I'll try to take them. Right, guys. Thank you.